Imagine your robot partner gliding across the room with effortless grace, their movements as natural as your own. Not only across your room, but anywhere you want it to move. Furthermore, it can move its legs effortlessly. Not stiff like a metal junk, but just like a human. Don't you like the idea? However, it sounds futuristic, right? Moreover, there is another catch. What if you could achieve that level of fluidity with just a few key upgrades? We're diving deep into the secrets of optimizing robot leg joints, ensuring your companion isn't just functional, but truly elegant. Is your current companion moving with all the grace of a filing cabinet falling down a flight of stairs? We've all seen it. The telltale shudder of a gear engaging, the rigid lock of a knee joint, the hesitant, calculated placement of a foot. It's a mechanical ballet of the absurd, and frankly, it's holding back the relationship. Before we proceed, let me tell you one thing. If you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe. It means a lot to me. And if you have already subscribed, lots of thanks for your support. How can you truly partner with something that navigates your living room like it's traversing a minefield? The quest for fluidity isn't just about aesthetics. It's about safety, efficiency, and a deeper level of interaction. So, where do we even begin this mechanical makeover? Let's start with the most literal component, the joint fluid itself. You might think of it as mere lubrication, the WD-40 for the robotic soul, but are we thinking creatively enough? Standard industrial greases are for factory arms, not for a partner designed to share your personal space. The real revolution is brewing in vials of what are called magnetoreological fluids. Picture a liquid filled with tiny iron particles, a sort of mechanical blood. On its own, it flows freely, but apply a magnetic field, and in a millisecond, those particles align turning the liquid into a thick, near-solid gel. Can you see the implications? By wrapping a joint in an electromagnet, you could give your robot the power to decide, instantly, how stiff or loose that joint should be. One moment it could be rigid for lifting a heavy object, the next completely relaxed and compliant to absorb the shock of a misstep. This isn't just lubrication. It's dynamic, intelligent, and responsive dampening. But even the most magical fluid is useless if the muscles are crude. This brings us to the actuators, the motors that drive the movement. For years, robotics has been dominated by powerful but clumsy hydraulic systems, as seen in the now-retired generation of Boston Dynamics Atlas, or simple electric motors with complex gearboxes. These are the equivalent of a bodybuilder trying to learn ballet. All strength, no subtlety. The new all-electric atlas, however, points to a quieter, more nimble future. The key is a concept called series elastic actuation. Instead of a rigid motor cranking a joint directly, imagine placing a small, clever spring between the motor and the limb. What does this spring do? It adds compliance, a bit of give and take that mimics the natural elasticity of a biological tendon. It allows the robot to store and release energy, much like a pouncing cat, making movement far more efficient and shockingly smooth. This is a fundamental shift from building a rigid machine we command to building a physically intelligent body that can passively adapt to its world. Yet, what good are graceful muscles without a nervous system to control them? This is the challenge of proprioception a $50 word for the simple sense of knowing where your body parts are without looking. Close your eyes and touch your finger to your nose. How did you do that? 
A complex network of sensors in your muscles and joints fed your brain a constant stream of data. Your robot needs the same gift. Upgrading its encoders, inclinometers, and force torque sensors is like giving it a heightened sense of self-awareness. When the robot's brain knows exactly how its knee is bent and precisely how much pressure is on its ankle, it can make the microscopic adjustments that separate a fluid stride from a clumsy stumble. Now we arrive at the ghost in the machine, the brain behind the motion. For decades, we programmed robots with painstaking instructions for every single movement. Walk forward, lift leg, bend knee to 43.7 degrees, place foot. It was exhausting and brittle. The slightest change in terrain, an unseen rug, could send the whole system into a cascade of errors. But what if a robot could learn to walk the same way a child does? This is the promise of AI, specifically a technique called reinforcement learning. Engineers now create a perfect digital twin of the robot in a simulation and essentially tell it to figure it out. The AI tries millions of combinations of movements, falling down countless times in the virtual world. It gets a small reward for every successful step, for every smooth transition, for every bit of energy saved. Over time, it doesn't just learn a single way to walk. It develops an intuitive, physics-based understanding of motion itself. This is how the latest humanoids from companies like Figure AI, now being tested in BMW factories, and Tesla's Optimus Gen 2 are being trained, moving beyond rigid programming into a realm of learned, adaptive grace. So we've built a more fluid partner. The jerky movements are gone, replaced by a silent, confident glide. Is this an unqualified victory? Should we not pause and ask what we are truly creating? On one hand, a fluid, responsive robot is a safer robot. It's one that won't accidentally knock over your grandmother or shatter a glass it was trying to hand you. It can navigate the unpredictable chaos of a human home, making it a far more useful assistant. But is there a line we risk crossing? By making them so seamlessly human-like in their motion, are we designing a companion that is too perfect, a partner that doesn't challenge us in the messy, imperfect way humans do? Are we building an elegant escape from the beautiful friction of real relationships? And we must ask the darker question. Every technology is a double-edged sword. A robot that can move with the fluid efficiency of a predator can be used for more than just folding laundry. When we perfect the grace of a machine, are we also perfecting its potential lethality? The path forward is already hinting at even more radical changes. Researchers are experimenting with biohybrid actuators that incorporate actual muscle tissue, and self-healing materials that could repair a strained joint on the fly. Imagine an AI that doesn't just predict the physics of the next step, but predicts your intent based on your posture, moving to help you before you even ask. Ultimately, we are not just upgrading a machine's leg joints. We are choreographing a new kind of dance. The goal isn't just to build a better machine, but to create a partner capable of moving in sync with us, physically and perhaps, one day, emotionally. The real question isn't just how we make them move more like us, but how we will change when they finally do. This video shows the next generation of the Atlas robot, highlighting the move to an all-electric system that enables a much wider and more fluid range of motion, which is central to the article's discussion. Watch the next generation of Atlas. So, that is it. Thank you for joining us on this journey. Let's continue this conversation in the comments below. If you like the video, please hit the bell icon to get notified and don't forget to like with your friends, share and subscribe for more insights. If you have already subscribed, tons of thanks for your support. It means a lot to me. And please consider signing up for membership zone to support Wooden Slet so that we can make it better and better. See you in the next video. Till then, goodbye. Take care and stay safe.